Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Eden Zero, Chapter 154. Uh, when we last left our heroes, we saw kind of the climax of Rebecca's game against Lyra, uh, as Rebecca just could not get a win, uh, and she worked out it was because Lyra could change the numbers on the cards with her Ether Gear, uh, and Rebecca then comes up with a gambit to reveal uh, Lyra's lying by not putting her five on the table. Um, and then when Lyra draws a five anyway, it's quickly revealed that Lyra has been cheating the whole time. Uh, and so a more one-on-one -on -one fight begins, but before it really can, uh, Callum shows up, or Shiki shows up with Callum, uh, interrupting the battle. Um, and then Shiki's, Shiki's just like, let's get the fuck out of here. Callum and Lyra try to stop them, but, but then none other than the Rutherford siblings appear to... Um, interrupt that, letting Shiki and Rebecca get away. So all that being said, let's jump right on into Chapter 154, Sky Mech Ninjutsu. Um, excuse me. And our picture here is of Jean and Clean. Jean's, like, sitting at a, at a table reading a newspaper, and Clean is kind of smiling at the camera. Uh, it's a, let's call it suggestive pose. Um, but anyway, we open... Um, with Shiki kind of carrying Rebecca away. Uh, as Rebecca asks him, What do you mean which has been kidnapped? It's my fault. Shora got her while I was wasting time. Uh, but Rebecca presses, But why take which? I don't know. But I do know that android lives mean nothing to him. Uh, and Rebecca kind of comments, Well, he is planning to use all link to kill all the bots in the Aoi Cosmos. Uh, and then some drones show up. Intruders detected. Switching to extermination mode. And they just start shooting. Uh, Shiki kind of dodges, but... And Rebecca kind of screams at the kind of... The kind of... Um, you know, she's being kind of tossed around by Shiki's moves. Ah! Uh, and then Happy runs by. Rebecca! Happy! Uh, she calls up to, to Shiki. Shiki, get me to Happy. Okay. Uh, and Happy starts transforming. Transformation. Happy Blaster. Assault Rifle Mode. And instead of being a pistol, he's now a large, a longer rifle. A uh, single rifle, instead of being two pistols. And Rebecca just starts shooting. Take this! And she starts blowing up uh, drones left and right. Shiki, spin me left! You got it! Uh, and then we spot it. she spots another drone. There! And she shoots it. Uh, the drones are just falling out of the sky. I do want to take just the slightest moment to kind of think about AI in this series. Like... I would accept that drones don't really have AI in the way that bots do, that they're a little bit less sophisticated. They're just kind of, um, you know, commanded. Like, like they're, they're unmanned ships. They're being piloted somewhere back in the control room or something. Um, but either way, it's, it's a little odd they're blowing up bots and not really commenting on it. Because back with Shiki and, and the self-destruct drones... They did have a conversation about that. It was a really... One of my favorite scenes in the arc so far. Uh, and it's just... It's slightly odd to not really have any kind of commentary on that topic. Uh, it's not not like game-breaking or anything, but it's a little it's a little bit weird. Either way, Shiki looks around. I think we got them all. Uh, Happy turns back to normal and goes to hug Rebecca. Rebecca, I'm so glad you're okay. I'm, so, I'm glad you're okay too, Happy. And then Pino walks up. Master! Pino... The sky is filled with security drones. I recommend we proceed through back alleys. Uh, and then Moscow has also showed up. And Shiki asks him, Where are Wise and Homura? We got separated, Moskoi. Uh, and Rebecca kind of comments, I hope they're okay. Uh, and speaking of, we sort of come back to, to both of them. Uh, Wise looking around. Where in the cosmos did everybody go? Uh, and Homura is still kind of being followed by Creed. I humbly request that you not follow me. Uh, and Creed counters, what am I supposed to do? We're both going in the same direction. So yeah, they're still they're still okay, the two of them. Uh, wise more so than Homura, who's just not really not really happy to be in the same place in the same place with with Creed. Anyway, with that we kind of come back to the Rutherfords, uh, and specifically Lyra and Callum. Actually, the crowd is still kind of cheering at the thought of the fight. Uh, and Lyra kind of grunts, all these losers coming in here and interrupting my show. And Callum sort of stares silently at the two uh, siblings. And Clean looks around. The people. So many of them. Uh, and Jean tells, tells her, there's a lot of noise in here. I'll change it to the howl of the wind. 
And he activates his ether gear, gets the wind going, and throws it at Lyra and Callum. Oof, Lyra jumps out of the way. Callum also jumps out of the way. Um, Lyra throws him cards, three of a kind. Um, but clean reacts, wind reflect. And the cards are all kind of deflected uh, by her wind, shocking Lyra. And clean, clean explains, your attacks, they won't work on me. My wind steals all. Is this, um, is this our first, like, real clean fight uh, since she joined the crew? Because, like, on Foresta, she largely kind of sat, she might have done some, like, drone piloting like she, like she did at the beginning of this arc. But she largely kind of had a breakdown when she sensed Mueller was around um, before she got kind of saved by, by Sister. And there weren't really any fights on Red Cave. She might have had a quick little moment um, during Sandra. But I think that, I think this is the first big clean fight, and maybe even the first big gene fight we've had um, since they joined the crew, which is nice. It's good to see them. They're they're, they're fun characters. Either way, uh, Clean kind of throws her wind at Lyra. Lyra kind of pushed back by it. Ugh! And my brother's wind, it obstructs all. So yeah, we're seeing there they're they're stealing as as um, Clean puts it. Her stealing the cards. And the obstruction provided by Jean. As their wind just kind of rips through the stadium. And Callum in particular is staring down Jean. It looks like this, this fight might kind of divide itself into two one-on-ones instead of one two-on-two. Either way, uh, Jean stares down Callum. Sky Mech Ninjutsu attack. Windstorm slash. And he sends like an X of wind towards Callum. Uh, and the crowd cheers. He's a ninja. Nin nin. Uh, and Callum kind of like spins out of the way or he turns into like ash i think wasn't that his ether gear i think i'm, I'm trying to remember how his ether gear worked um because he also had the handprint thing and i don't quite recall like i might be getting his ether gear confused with scullion's dragon slayer ability in 100 years quest um either way he kind of ashes himself out of the way um and then callum counters with his own sky mech ninjutsu attack Okay, what's his, I, th I thought, I thought, I thought that the only reason that, that Jean could use Sky Mech Ninjutsu is because of his Wind Aether gear, and Callum I don't think has Wind Aether gear, I'm not quite entirely sure what his Aether gear is, let me see if I can do a quick, um, uh, Callum Steelford wiki search for any info on his, his, uh, Aether gear, uh, utilizes Mist, uh, Carburetor, and that might actually be, I don't remember the name, so it might get revealed in this chapter, I just haven't gotten to it yet, uh, so I might have just spoiled that for myself live on camera, my bad, either way, Mist is his ability, not quite sure how that ties in with the handprints we saw back in 151, but that does explain how he, how he dodges the attack and how he's using his own Sky Mech Ninjutsu. Either way, uh, Gene is shocked to see his own style used against him. What? Uh, and... Wind or mist, I guess, comes raining down on on Jean. Drizzling mist. Gah! And Clean calls brother. And Lyra stops her. Hey, eyes on me, little girl. Flame card. And she sh shoots four cards towards towards Clean. And then Clean tries to or deflects them with her her windshield. But then Lyra just lets out kaboom, and they explode all around Clean. Ah! And she's kind of burned and beaten. Uh, Lyra last. Nee <laughs> So, yeah, Clean's in a bad spot right now. Uh, we're nearing the end of the chapter, just looking at the, the cursor on Injure here. I, I still think, I think in the end, this is going to be the fight that they win. I don't think, I don't think this is leading up to, you know, Callum and Lyra get away. Uh, I think this is kind of their big, you know, um, Majima henchman villain fight. Henchman's kind of a kind of not quite the term I wanted. Majima sub sub villain fight, I guess. You know, like we saw with Milani and with Nase. I think this is largely going to be their their big fight. Either way, let's just keep reading. Uh, we focus on we come back to though Jean and Callum, as Jean is injured but still standing, and he kind of stares Callum down. How do you know Sky Mech Ninjutsu? And Callum counters, don't tell me you forgot me, Gene. And Gene flashes back and he sees, I guess what Callum looked like in the past. 
very different. Whereas Callum has like largely a shaved head except for like a single kind of mohawk ponytail combo and that's that's light in color. The the gene that the Callum that Gene recognizes has, you know, shoulder length black hair parted in the in the middle. Uh very different look, but you can see the same eyes. Shocking gene. Uh gotta load six more images, my bad. Uh, and then we come back to the planet Gilst, Skynet Dojo, nine years ago. And we see, I guess this is when Gene was learning his ether gear, him being taunted for being a mech, a cyborg, which does kind of tie in with, with the bot, um, bot discrimination we've seen in the past. Robot boy, nya nya, robot boy. And it feels very much like, like the kind of, kind of bigotry like a child would do. Um, uh, so, like, like, I, I, I'm, for some reason my mind is taking me to, the anime just got to, uh, the Mueller flashback, which is one of my least favorite scenes of the entire series. I think Mueller is incredibly cartoonish. And these guys are also a little bit cartoonish. They're just like, robot boy, robot boy. But they're also like children, and they don't seem to be doing anything beyond what you'd expect. Children who have learned bigotry through their, through, like, authority figures would do. Um, so anyway, that's, I feel like this video is filled with asides that aren't really meaningful in any way, and for that I kind of apologize. This video does not quite feel like my best work. Either way, focusing on the chapter at hand, uh, one of the boys kind of presses, you got a little sister, right? And the, uh, another one, uh, the, there's one with spiky hair, one with kind of short hair and like sideburns, and one with like a top knot who's sort of a heavier set. Uh, anyway, the shaved, shaved head, you got a little sister, right? Uh, and the spiky head responds, is she a robot girl? Uh, and the top knot got kid laughs. Pff. And Gene turns back to glare at them. And he's, a hand on his shoulder stops him. Ignore them. If you need a sparring partner, I'll take you on. And it's Callum, who was apparently mem a member of this, not just a member of this dojo, which was kind of obvious, but also a friend to Gene which is brand new information. I'm really curious how this is going to shape um, the fight going forward. Uh, anyway, the young Gene stares back at, at Callum and we come back to the present as Gene recognizes him. Callum? And Callum looks at him. Oh, you do remember the days we trained at the dojo and how you couldn't beat me in a single sparring match. Ooh, so it's going to be... I, I actually here with that, I think Gene might lose. And maybe to make another reference to something else, uh, I've been reading Grave Master. Um, specifically, the, the Jigen Let vibes is what this gives me. Uh, how, you know, on Jigen and Let's first fight, Let is handily defeated. Um, and they have this kind of shared history, the same fighting style. And I think we could be seeing that here. That uh, Jean will lose now, and then in a later part in either the arc or the larger story... You'll have a rematch with Callum and then win. Uh, hopefully Callum will not be summarily off in the way Jigen was because the whole Jigen let drama is kind of a mess in my opinion. But anyway, focusing on the chapter at hand um, and how you couldn't beat me in a single sparring match. And then he sends this other gust of wind towards Jean. Cruel mischarge. And he dashes down it, striking Jean. Gah! Uh, and Jean kind of shoots his fist out with his, his cyborg body, when God punch! And it does actually hit Callum, but a new, a, a fist print actually marks itself on, on Gene's chest. Miss God punch! And Callum then decks Gene right there. Wah! We may have trained together as kids, but if we're meeting again as enemies, then I will destroy you. And Gene kind of lands, battered, beaten. He's not doing too hot. And he looks down, and it looks like a good chunk of his body is evaporating into mist. What? What's happening? Yeah, he's not doing great. That's not good. Uh, and Callum looks at him. An imperial technique for altering my opponent's condition. Empire Ether. My Carbiator will turn you to mist. And that's where we end. Yeah, the title, the name of his Ether gear was uh, supposed to be a, a new reveal. But yeah, um, okay, so I like the chapter a lot. Uh, I like the Callum and Jean sort of story. It's not, like, it's not this big, deep, like, operatic backstory like Let and Jigen kind of tried for back in Rave Master. 
it's very, it's kind of simple. They trained together, they weren't super close, but he was the one guy who wasn't a total bigot towards him. And that's good enough for, for, um, not even really a friendship, but at least like an, um, a shared camaraderie. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that kind of play out. Um, seeing how Callum kind of develops, uh, going, going forward. I'm also curious about the concept of Empire Ether, uh, which we've seen mentioned in the past. I think specifically Lyra says it to some of the, the you know, lo lower officers before she goes off to kidnap Rebecca. That it can, like, change white to black and black to white. It can, like, change the nature of things. Which we see is kind of what he does. He turns his opponent into mist. The question I'm kind of wondering is, though, is what is Empire Ether in particular? Like, what... I mean, I think there's some larger questions on as to the nature of Ether. Is this person's Ether type innate, or do they learn it? What's kind of the difference? You know, was was Gene always only going to be able to do Wind Ether, or was that kind of set in stone when he went to, to the Sky Mech Dojo? Was Shiki always destined, were Shiki and Shora both always destined for gravity ether, or did that come set in stone when they trained with Ziggy? It's a question that, that Mashima hasn't really answered yet. And I'm kind of curi curious to see how that will all play out. I'm, I'm curious if the concept of Empire Ether will kind of lead to those kinds of discussions. Because it's like, the fact that it's an, it, it feels like, I'm trying to find the right way to phrase this, it feels like an ether. It's like it's, an, it's a type of ether given to members of the empire, which means that if I'm right, then that ether must kind of be imparted to, you know, imperial officers. Maybe just the oceans. Maybe some of the more you know higher higher military officers. Maybe, and it and I think that's the only way it could work. I feel like I'm stammering too much this episode. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to trying to piece out ether. It's the kind of thing I've sort of left to the side for a long time because it's not super important how ether works from a biological standpoint. But now it is a bit more with whatever, however the hell Empire Ether works. Um. Anyway, so that's sort of, but you know, we we've seen this kind of thing before. It's the same concept as what Lyra was doing during Lost Card, though where that is just changing the number on a card. Callum is going several steps further by changing a person into a different element, which, you know, is is definitely dangerous, and I don't know how Gene is going to make it through that. I don't know, like, we don't know enough about it to know how we can stop it. He clearly is going to stop it. Gene is not just going to die here, I don't think. But yeah, that's the Gene, that's the Gene Callum fight. Uh, Lyra and Clean is a good bit simpler. You know, it doesn't have all this this meaty backstory behind it. It's just kind of Lyra shoots some Lyra shoots some cards, Clean blocks them, Lyra does it again, but this time they explode, and Clean is not doing too hot. It's simple it's it's simple, but the real focus of this chapter is, as the title suggests, the Sky Mech Ninjutsu boys, who are, you know, have all this have this history to, to recap, and you know, Gene has to kind of turn into mist. But yeah, beyond that, we see the rest of the gang is all sort, sort of variously advancing towards their goals. Jiki and Rebecca are headed towards Witch. Uh, Wise, Homura, and Creed are all variously trying to find Rebecca. But yeah, the real focus here is on on the ninjutsu fight. And yeah, I don't really know how... I don't... I, again, I don't know enough about Carburetor to know how Gene can stop it. But he's going to have to. Um, and I can't wait to see how, how that fight all plays out. So I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!